In this video, I'm going to show how I made plaster molds from both a thrown bowl, which could be just a bowl that's thrown and used for a mold, which is what I've done, or it could be fired and used as a slump mold. And I also made a mold using just a plastic bowl. Uh, the one thing that you have to realize when you're making a, a plaster uh, mold, like a hump mold like this, is you have to make sure that your original mold does not have an undercut. You don't want it to come back in like it's always more open at the top. That way you have a form that pops out nice and easily. Although this video is about plaster molds and how to make plaster molds, I did wanna show you that in addition to plaster molds, of course, uh, drape molds can be made of many different things besides plaster. You could have wooden drape molds. Uh, many of you might recognize this is like a GR um, pottery molds. Uh, this is a bamboo tools drape mold um, and it has a stand that goes with it. I just have it off right now. Um, you could make your own drape molds from clay like this was a a uh, piece of clay that I just draped into a, uh, just like a plastic dish. I bought it at Aldi, uh, a thick piece of clay, and I uh, rested it in there. Um, I dusted it with a little bit of cornstarch so it wouldn't get stuck and kind of ribbed it down in there. So you can make uh, drape molds out of a lot of things. Uh, but this video that I'm going to show is about plaster and I'm going to do a plaster drape mold in this But the first thing that I'm going to do before I put plaster in this is I am going to coat it with a separator um, I thought I had mold separator. I don't seem to I can't really find it around here So I don't know where I put it. So instead I'm just going to use Vaseline or petroleum jelly and I'm just going to spread it on the inside It's going to be enough of a deterrent so the plaster will not get stuck to this because I will want to be able to reuse this uh, for other things besides, I don't want to just leave the plaster in it. The petroleum jelly is going to help it to become released. All right. Because not all plaster is equal, um, I am using a plaster that is really great for pottery. So it is the number one pottery plaster. Um, you can find it at any supplier of uh, ceramic supplies. Um, the things that I'm uh, using to uh, get ready, I have a bucket, which I am going to, uh, I just have it lined with two bags and kind of taped to the outside. Um, I prefer to do something like that so my cleanup is e easier. I have a bunch of paper towels that are on hand. I have my trash can very close at hand. I have my molds ready to go, what I'm going to be pouring the plaster into, and I have a bucket of water over there um, already measured out that I'm going to be pouring into my uh, lined bucket. And I did not mention it, but I also have a respirator that I'm wearing as I deal with the clay, uh, with the plaster because it is gonna go airborne. And once, once I do get it mixed up into the water, I can take my respirator off. Okay, step number one is I'm going to cut a hole in the top of the plaster bag. I'll set my knife to the side so I don't get it all gross. Really, after I have my bag ready, I do need to have my water in my container. There we go. So once I've cut the bag open, okay, I used a knife to cut the bag open in the top. I have my water now in my bucket and I'm gonna put my respirator on and then I'm gonna sprinkle the plaster on the top of the water. When you sprinkle, the plaster does go in the air. Normally, I would prefer to do something like this outside, but it is pouring rain right now. So instead, I have my ventilation on in here, so it is venting out the room. So as you sprinkle, when you start to get enough 
it will start to make a slight little mountain on the top. This is going to be an obvious observation, but always keep your plaster in a very dry area. You don't want it to be stored in a super humid area where it's gonna absorb water in the bag. All right, I'm getting close because it's starting to mound a little bit on top. Almost there. All right, the way that I was always taught with plaster is you know it's ready, you've put in enough when you have a little mountain that stays on the top, just a little mountain. Now it's ready to mix. Now the thing about mixing is you want to get down in there and kind of take your fingers and break up stuff. Oh, and I did not mention, <laughs> I have a rubber glove on, but my rubber glove was short. So I put some plastic up above and I've taped that onto my arm. Um, I just prefer not to get the plaster all over my skin if I can avoid it because it is very drying. So, I just wanted to make sure that it was covered nicely. All right, so with my hand in there, I'm moving around my fingers. I'm searching for any clumps, lumps. Um, I should have also mentioned that this is cool water that I'm using, not hot water, because you want the chemical reaction to be like a slow and even reaction. I think if you use hot water, it definitely speeds it up, but you are more prone to having uh, little pockets of chunks, which nobody wants chunks. So that being said, as you're stirring, you're gonna find things that suddenly just form. So your fingers are active the entire time. Now I'm gonna stir this and I'm gonna just continue to just let it have its chemical reaction. Oh, and I can take off the, uh, I can take off the respirator when I'm done uh, with moving the, the, the plaster. When I go to put this bag away again, I'll put it back on, uh, but I'm done moving the dry plaster, I should say. So as long as uh, I'm done making the dust, I can, I can take off my respirator. So I'm gonna mix this up for a while. And I'll just put this on like a fast forward so you can kind of see the process and I'll let you know how long it is. Occasionally I have people ask me, well, can you use like a a drill attachment to mix plaster and the answer is no you do not want to do that because you don't want to incorporate bubbles into this you want to really have a gentle mixing with your fingers so you can feel it the molds that I have over here those are the ones that I threw in the video um, and I have let them dry for two days with nothing covering them they are quite thick, so they definitely needed the two days to do it. Um, I just need them sturdy enough so they are gonna hold the plaster. They are going to be waste clay, so I will dispose of them after I remove the plaster mold. Okay, this has been about 15 minutes, and I can see that it's really kind of, um, it, it almost looks like a latex paint on my glove. And this is really the consistency that I want in order to pour it out. And I have a measuring cup and I did put some Vaseline on this just to make the cleanup a little easier. I'm going to go ahead and pour some in my molds, I'm trying to do it kind of gently without forming a ton of bubbles. last bowl here. Okay, I'm gonna do this one. Um, now, this plaster, it's very important that you do not wash plaster down your sink because if you do, you can completely clog your sink. So what I like to do is I like to line it, as I said, and I will just discard 
the whole lining into the trash and I'm keeping my bucket clean. This uh, waste material that I have here, this is all um, d disposable. And here I'm removing, disposing of my gloves and the plastic liner in the can. And now I'm going to let the plaster cure for a couple of hours. Okay, it's been a couple of hours and I thought I would go ahead and see if I could pop out my uh, plaster from the molds. So this plastic one, this is the one where I had to put Vaseline and just by tapping it a little bit, it comes out. Ooh, I definitely have some, uh, some creasing in there that I didn't anticipate. I probably uh, was a little, I was a little overzealous with my, um, <laughs> with my Vaseline there because I've got some like little lines and stuff. That's okay, I will go along in there and I'll clean that up in a little bit. Now, as far as these big ones, okay, to get these off, I, I'm going to flip them upside down and just gently release. I'm pulling up the edge all the way around. And again, I'm looking at this, uh, this plastic or this leather hard clay as being waste clay that I wouldn't use it again. Now it is possible maybe that I could um, cast again in it if I wanted to, but I'm not really worried about that. Okay, now this one looks pretty good. Okay, it's nice and smooth. And uh, I do want to show you how I clean up the outer edges. Okay, now for cleaning up the edge of this, this is, uh, it's got a little bit of a sharp corner there and I wanna knock it off and make it round. So I can use perhaps a metal scraper or if you wanted to take off more you could use say a sure form and take that off but I'm just gonna scrape off some of the corner I want to round it so it becomes uh, a little more durable when I store it so the kids don't chip it in my classroom so easily Okay, now I'm going to just give this a good wipe down. And this does have a little bit of a texture um, that I'm just gonna take a rib and get some of this texture off from my throwing sponge. So a little scrubber, scrubber pad, and a sponge, and a little bit of scraper, and I have a really nice mold. Now, this can be used when you put something underneath it. You could also do one extra version. This is an example of an old mold that I made, and I put a little kind of a pedestal. So it kind of looks like a mushroom, but the pedestal helps to lift it up so I don't have to use a turntable. This one has an edge that just has like a, a little, kind of an irregular notch there. So for this one, I'm definitely gonna take it down with a sure form just to even it, smooth it. Okay, now that that's smooth, last step again. Gonna clean up the mold with a slightly scrubber pad. It smooths out the surface.
and the last one that I need to take care of is the uh, the one that I did in the plaster mold and honestly it's been a really long time since I've used um, uh, Vaseline as a mold release I completely wasn't even thinking about the texture that the Vaseline would leave behind because it was uh, I put it on there rather thick and I just didn't think about it so I need to scrape out some of the texture that I left behind on that. I'll still have a little bit, but I don't think it, it's not gonna be significant enough to actually show. Okay, and with this scraped a little bit more, now I'm gonna use the scrubber pad. Smooth that out the rest of the way. And you can see why I would normally do this sort of stuff outside. Um, it's quite messy, uh, but I, I have stuff covering my table that I'm just gonna throw away, so. It will make cleanup a lot easier to just dispose of it. And there we go. There's my plaster mold from my Aldi bowl.